Like I said, there's a lot of vocabulary today, and I'm going to start off by highlighting some of the important words that we need to know. The first word is polynomials. You know what the word polynomials means? I'll give you a hint. It may or may not be written right after the word I just highlighted. One term or many terms added together. <laughs> Uh, the first part of the word poly, we know that the word poly means many, right? And nomials means numbers or terms. So numbers or terms is a polynomial. Um, when I say terms, if I were to look at this example right here at the top of the page, 3x to the fifth plus 2x minus 5 minus x squared plus 7x to the fourth plus 4x to the third, how many terms would you say that has? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those would be my six terms. Um, pretty much every term is whatever is connected by a plus or a minus. Okay? And we always know that when we have a plus or a minus, it doesn't matter, it always applies to the number that comes after it. Right? Um, let's see. The degree, now this talks about the degree of a term. We're specifically going to call this the degree of a polynomial. And this will become really important over the next few modules. Uh, the degree of a polynomial is whatever the biggest exponent is in that polynomial. So looking at the example again up here, I have six terms. Which of those six terms has the biggest exponent? This one, right? X to the fifth, there's nothing higher than X to the fifth, right? That means the degree of this polynomial is a fifth degree polynomial. If I took this term out of the polynomial, what would the degree of the remaining polynomial be? What's the highest exponent of what's left? Four. That's the biggest exponent. Okay? So it doesn't matter the number in front. What matters is the exponent when you're looking at the degree. So, so? Okay? Next one, coefficient. You've probably heard that word before, correct? If I asked you, up in my same example there, if I asked you to find the term that is x to the fourth, what is the coefficient of that term? 7. So I come find x to the fourth, it's just the number that's in front of the letter. What if I asked you for the coefficient of x squared? I go to x squared, there's no number in front of it. What does that mean? It's a 1, but since it's a minus sign, we're going to call it a negative 1. Okay? So the coefficient is just what number comes in front. A lot of people, when I ask for a coefficient, they want to put the x with it. They're like, oh, that's negative x squared. No, we're talking about just the number in front of it. Take the x off of it, okay? There is a very important coefficient known as the leading coefficient. Usually when you think of something leading, it's out in front, right? Now, the trick is it can only be out in front if it's in what we call standard form, okay? Now, standard form, does anyone know what that is? Anyone remember that from IM2? It's the highest exponent term written first all the way down to the lowest exponent term. So, I think this is the same, this is the same polynomial that was typed up top, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and take that and write it in standard form. So which term had the biggest exponent? This one, because we have a 5 there, we don't have one there, don't have one, 2, 4, 3, 5 is the biggest. So 3x to the fifth comes first. What would be the term with the next highest exponent? 7x to the fourth. So I'm going to put plus 7x to the fourth. What would come next? 4x to the third. And then what? 
minus x squared. My x squared has to come before something with no exponent. And then plus 2x, and the minus 5 comes at the end. So what's kind of interesting is I have 5, 4, 3, 2, what's that? 1. one. What do you think that is? 0. zero. That's technically negative 5x to the 0 power. Because what is anything to the 0 power? 1. So when you have a term that has no x, you have to think about it as being technically x to the 0 power. Okay? So... Now that we have it in order, the leading coefficient is the first coefficient you see, which would be what? Three. That will have a lot of meaning, especially when we get into graphing things like this. Leading coefficient tells you a lot about the graph. All right? Um, let's see. Why is it important for it to be in standard form before you talk about the leading coefficient? Because I could technically write these terms in any order, so I can't necessarily just look at the first one. It has to be something that we all say, we're all going to write it in this order. That way we can all identify the leading coefficient in the correct way. Okay? So let's see. Standard form is important. Degree of a polynomial, that's what I talked about up there. Okay. So now we're going to give some names to things. These are the names of polynomials based on the degree of the polynomial. So we have a bunch of single terms here, so we're just going to look term by term. If this is the term I'm looking for, let's say that's the entire polynomial right there. What is the coefficient of that term? Three. What is the degree of that term? Five. Does anyone know what we call a fifth degree polynomial? We call it a quartic polynomial. Anything higher than a fifth degree, we just call by the degree. So we would just say it's an eighth degree polynomial. It's a ninth degree polynomial. We don't, it doesn't have a special name. And truthfully, a fifth degree polynomial is probably used more often than the word quartic. But there you have it. All right, what if this was my polynomial? What's the coefficient? What's the degree? Anyone know what we call a fourth degree polynomial? Did I say quartic? Hang on. A fourth degree is a quartic. I did this wrong for this one. Ah! A fifth degree is not a quartic, because quart doesn't mean five. Right? What means five? Quintic. You've heard the term quints. It's five, five babies in there. Quintic. Sorry about that. Hope that didn't confuse anyone. Next one. What's my coefficient? Four. What's my degree of this term? What do I call a third degree? This is a word you've heard. I know you've heard it. It's a cubic. Now we're getting into words that are going to be familiar to you. I'm just hopefully going to be giving you a little bit more meaning to words that you've heard before. All right, next one. What is my coefficient here? Negative 1. What is the degree? What do we call a second degree? Squared is kind of the, the shorthand way of saying it, but the official word? I know you know this word. Quadratic. A second degree is a quadratic. So if somebody asks for the quadratic term, they're asking for the one with the x squared. Next one, what's my coefficient? And what's my degree? What do we call a first degree polynomial? A linear polynomial. 
Why is it called linear? Because it makes a line when you graph it. And my last one, what's the coefficient? Negative five, what's the degree? Zero, what do we call a zero degree? We call it a constant, because no matter what x is, that term will always be negative 5. It will not be affected by x changing. Now, let me kind of explain a little bit to you to show how integrated math 3 kind of fits into this whole game. Right here, linears and constants. That's what you focused on when you were in IM1. IM1, the algebra portion of IM1 is all about lines, first degree polynomials. The algebra portion of IM2 is all about quadratics. You did factoring, you did graphing parabolas, all that kind of stuff. The algebra portion of IM3 finds the pattern that shows us what higher degree polynomials do. So we will be going back and touching on the concepts of linear and of quadratic, and we'll be seeing how does that progress then when you have higher degrees, okay? That's what we spend the first part of first semester on. Second semester, we'll get into some trigonometry, we'll get into some statistics, so if you're interested in going to stats next year, perhaps, um, you'll get a little taste of that to see if it's interesting to you. Uh, but that's the way the algebra part component kind of grows from IM1 to IM2 to IM3, okay? All right. Now let's talk about if I didn't want to classify it by the degree, we'll say that's the first name of a polynomial. Now we're going to do the last name. Let's do the number of terms. If I have one term in a polynomial, do you know what it's called? Starts with an M. A monomial. Mono meaning one. Nomial being number or term. So an example, x squared is a monomial, 3x is a monomial, pi would be a monomial, just one number, one term all by itself. All of these guys in this chart above, those were all monomials. What is it called when we have two terms in a polynomial? Another word that I know you've heard. A binomial. So like 3x minus 5. There's an example of a binomial. There's another example of a binomial. What about three terms? Trinomial. Four terms? It has a name. Quadrinomial, but quite frankly, we usually just call it a polynomial at that point. You'll very rarely hear that phrase or that word. Uh, I forgot an example of a trinomial. X squared plus 3X plus 2. Trinomials are what you dealt a lot with last year when you were factoring, right? You have trinomials like that. Quadrinomials, a lot of your cubic equations are quadrinomials. That would be an example of a quadrinomial. Okay. And again, monomial, binomial, trinomial, those are the most common ones. After that, they'll just call it a polynomial usually. So this part right here is just like what you're going to be doing on your homework, which is on the back side. Okay, this is like a mini version of the chart you're going to see back here. So here is my example, my first example. And it's kind of a mean first example because I threw in another letter there. Right? Hmm. How does that other letter apply to my degree and everything. What do I do with that second letter? Well, when you have more than one letter, 
you always focus on the first one alphabetically. So if I have an X and a Y, which letter am I looking at? X. I don't look at Y when I'm looking for a leading coefficient. I don't look at Y when I'm looking for a degree. I focus on the X. So if I were to ask if this is in standard form, I would be looking at the X's. I have X squared. I have X to the first. I have X to the zero. That is in standard form because based on the X, it's going in descending order. So what's the degree of this polynomial? What's the biggest exponent on an X that you see? Two. So this is a second degree polynomial. What is a second degree called again? Up here it's a quadratic, right? So that's its first name. It's a quadratic something. How many terms are there in this? Three. Okay, let's find its last name. Three terms is a trinomial. So what I have here is a quadratic trinomial. And as an afterthought, she asks for the leading coefficient. What's my leading coefficient here? Three just to get familiar with identifying those things. Does that make sense? We're just going to take the words that we learned up here and name these things here. So if I look at this one, I have X's and Y's. Yes? Which one am I looking at when I'm looking for degree? X, because it comes first alphabetically. So that part does not apply to what I'm asking about right now. This one does because it has the X. This does that does not. What term would come first if I had to write this in standard form? You know? 4x to the fourth because it's got the highest exponent on an x which is our first letter alphabetically. So what's the degree of that term? Okay. What's the leading coefficient? also a 4 because in standard form that would be written first. Now on your homework there's actually a little space if you wanted to go ahead and write it in standard form just to make your life a little easier you can. Okay, this one it's a little squishy to do that. How many terms are there? 5? So let's see, first name is a quartic And five terms, what do we call five terms? It's not on my list. Polynomial. Anything higher, we just say polynomial. Oop, you can't see what I'm writing, can I? There we go. So, so? All right. This right here, you probably thought this was just the number three. But it has a much fancier name. What is the degree of this? Zero. What's the, uh, how many terms are there? One term. And the leading coefficient happens to be the only coefficient, which is three. What do we have? Zero degree is a constant. One term is a monomial. We have a constant monomial. Who knew a number had such a fancy name? All right, you try the next two. Try to come up with the names of the next two. All right, starting here, what's my degree? Is this in standard form? It is. What's my degree then? One. What's the leading coefficient? 
two, because there's one, two terms. Um, two terms right there. I'm sorry, my leading coefficient is because that's a two. Uh, one degree, two terms, what do I have? Linear binomial. Any questions there? Pretty easy, right? And down here, is this one in standard form? No, because the higher exponent is coming last. So it would have to be flipped around to be standard form. What's the degree? Three, because that's my highest exponent. How many terms? Two terms. Six y is one term, negative 22 y to the third is the second term. And what's my leading coefficient? Negative 22, because again, even though this isn't written in standard form, it's whatever would be written first in standard form. So what do I have? A degree of three and two terms? A cubic binomial. So-so? Now, the last blank here gives me the name, but doesn't give me anything else but I can learn some, or I can identify some things from the name. If it is a cubic, what does that tell me? Does that tell me the degree or the number of terms or the leading coefficient? The degree is what? Three. three. And trinomial tells me what? Three terms. So now I just need to make something up that has three terms and that the highest exponent I see is a three. So let's see. I'm just going to do x to the second, don't do something like this. What's the problem with that? It's not simplified. The 3 and the 4 could be added together, right? So how could I take this and make it into a trinomial that would stay a trinomial? If I put an x with one of them to make them not like terms. Could I put like an x to the third there? Oh, I did something wrong, didn't I? Yes, correct me. Please correct me. It's supposed to be cubed, so I do need an x to the third somewhere. So I could either change this to a third, or I could go ahead and just throw a 3 on there, because my highest exponent now is a 3, right? As long as there's nothing higher than a 3, but I do have that 3. I almost forgot that 3. What's my leading coefficient in my example? That right there would be the leading coefficient if it was written in standard form. Okay? Now, just so you know, on your homework, you may get some degrees that are higher than a 5. In which case, there's a blank. It says a degree blank binomial. So if you get a 7th degree, you're just going to put degree 7, degree 8, degree 9. Okay? Um, and it's kind of hidden hinted to you there. Those ones should be pretty self-explanatory. This one, I give you some information and ask you to come up with the remaining information. And then a question just to make you think a little bit. Okay? So, again, take a picture of your homework. Make sure I can see all four sides of the page and your name at the top. And when you're finished, you can submit it to Google Classroom no later than when? Tomorrow at 8 a.m. Okay? Happy studying!